So this right here, this is 3D LiDAR data. And I'm gonna show you how you take this 3D LiDAR of a forest, which looks awesome, and then convert it to a bare earth model like this and get contours out of it. Let's get into it. So welcome back to another Indiana Jones video. Now, the other day I was in Missouri and I went ahead and flew a very dense vegetated area. It's this data set that's all around me right now. And I wanted to do that as a part of making some video content where I can go ahead and just show you some cool things that I do with LiDAR data and you can pick up a thing or two whenever I'm showing you. So this data set around me, this is a, a very dense vegetation. I was uh, flying on the M300 drone, I was flying the Rock R2A LiDAR. And now in this video, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at a few things of interest, which is mainly, you know, how well does this LiDAR see below that dense vegetation that you're seeing here, these trees, and see that bare earth below it. Now, this is like the biggest reason that someone would use LiDAR instead of photogrammetry is because with a LiDAR system, you can actually get this bare earth measurement below the canopy of the trees and presumably in brush and tall grass. And really the question is always, well, how well does it do it? So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at that. And then also I'm gonna show you my workflow of how I process this data to generate the, the bare earth and generate contours and some ground control points and the report that goes with that. So this is just gonna be a quick video showing this data set that I think is pretty cool. And I hope you pick up a few things and you learn a few things. And if you do, please like, subscribe. And if you like this kind of content, I'll keep making more videos where I just kind of go through some data sets and show you what it is that I'm doing with these data sets. So let's just jump right into it. So here we have that dense data set. I mean, it was Missouri. This was straight up swamp ass weather and very hot outside this day. This is a river right here in the front. I was actually on the other side of this river uh, on top of a bluff. It was really cool. We actually just drove and found a road called Bluff View and then uh, found uh, some nice people that let us fly from their backyard across the river to get this whole kind of 100, I think it was 186 acres. Let's see. It is, yep, 186 acres of area right there. Now, let's go ahead and just zoom right into you know, this river embankment here because, you know, right along the river, there's a lot of thick brush and we can go ahead and get a pretty good idea of how well the system is seeing through this dense vegetation. So let me go ahead and you can see here's the trees. I'm gonna go ahead and change the view into the elevation view. And then I'm gonna go ahead and rotate the data set so we're looking at it from below. Now, if we're looking at it from below, all the points that we're seeing that are low, these are ones below the trees. So here we go. This is, uh, you know, this is right up underneath this very dense, you know, brush that's right along the riverbank. Then we can see the road here, and we see quite a, quite a few points there made it through the canopy to the bare earth. We got a lot of points here, and we can go ahead and kind of zoom down a little bit. Let me zoom out and down. Let it load for a second. There's more points that are loading. And you can kind of see, I'll, I'll actually just do a full zoom out so you guys can see the, the whole bottom of the data set here. Now that is the full bottom of the data set, but let's go ahead and pick, you know, right along that riverbank is gonna be, I mean, I, I'm from St. Louis, from Missouri, so this kind of uh, environment was very familiar to me. It's honeysuckle, it's thick, thick, thick foliage. And I can zoom in to a spot that looks less, you know, less points on the ground. And we can go ahead and zoom into, let's say zoom in right here, and then kind of rotate around and get an idea of what, what we're looking at here. So this is inside this tree area, very dense brush. And I could turn that RGB view back on so we can get a good idea. So yeah, very thick trees, just kind of, just, it looks beautiful to be honest. And again, let me go ahead and turn it back into the elevation and then we'll go ahead and flip it down and around to get an idea again of what we're seeing, seeing inside this data set. So you can see there's all those points down in there on the bare earth, 
on any of those trees. Now, with photogrammetry, you would just, it would just, you'd never get this. This is just, it would never happen. You'd have to, like, how would you do that? You'd have to be taking multiple photos through trees. And I don't know, last time I tried taking pictures through trees, didn't work out too well. <laughs> so this is honestly one of the coolest things about LiDAR, that it can do this. Now, the other thing is that typically it's not enough to just look and see like, hey, how many points do I got there underneath those trees? You actually need to classify the data and strip off all this vegetation. So I can go ahead and show you right now, there's all those trees and I'm going to click over here on the layers and say show ground only, boom. And now that is just the, the bare earth, you know, so it's classified the data, it's extracted only this ground points and then we can actually draw the contours on top of all this as well. So you we can see these are one foot contours that I, I produced and honestly it looks pretty darn good. I mean, that, those are, that's more shots that you're gonna get if you went out there as a surveyor and uh, took a base rover pair and walked to the woods and tried getting data. So it's pretty, pretty impressive. Now, how did I do this? How did I just generate and take off that, that all the vegetation? And this is a very important step that any LiDAR works in this. So this is, I'm in the rock cloud software right here in the cloud. And this works for any LiDAR, whether it's the DJI L1 LiDAR, whether it's the Rock R2A, which is what this was flown with, with the Minivox from Regal or a full Vox, any drone LiDAR or even aerial LiDAR, the software handles all that. And all you have to do is, I created a project here and I called it Missouri Dense Vegetation. And I uploaded the data and defined the uploaded uh, coordinate reference system. So every LiDAR system that you get that makes you know, mapping grade LiDARs, it's going to be in a projection, and then you're going to need to reproject that into your local coordinate system. In this case, I reprojected down here to this NAD83 2011, Missouri East. Uh, it's in the US survey feet, and it's a NAVD88 vertical datum uh, for the height. Uh, and you can see there's a total of 186 acres. So I reprojected it. I added some ground control points. And here's, this is something pretty cool, actually. So here we have a ground control point. Now, one thing that you often have to do is kind of align your data to ground control points because for one reason or another, the data just isn't aligned. You know, it's all self-registered as a unit. You know, this, this whole data can be moved up, down, right, but it's not connected into a control point. So one of the quick features you can actually do is you can come in here in this quick tools and select this auto align. This is a super handy functionality and you can just select a point and then you select a point that you want to align that to. Let's just say it's 105 and align, boom. Now, it just aligned the data set to that point, that GCB that point, but you'll see it's probably gonna be way, yeah, it's way off because I just randomly selected a ground control point that wasn't the right one. So you can see the whole thing just auto moved to that point, but in this case, I'm gonna go back to where it was. It was all on zeros, zero, zero, zero. Okay, now we're back. So yeah, I would, I would uh, upload the data, reproject the data, put these ground control points in there, auto align to those GCPs, and then I would click on this process. And right here, this is the rock surveyor. That's gonna generate that bare earth classified LiDAR data set. It's going to strip away all the vegetation, the trees, give you a digital elevation model, as well as the contours. And it gives you a ground control point report, which you can see here in this deliverables. If I click on the accuracy report, and here we have the accuracy report, and you can see there was a, about a, a half a tenth of a foot vertical accuracy on this one, 83 points per square meter, uh, 186 was the acres, so the, the size of the data, and you can see your points down here. Now for this was just, this was fun, I was in Missouri, and I was like, man, this is, this is just a beautiful area, it's my, my home area, and I think this is just a cool data set to see like, how well does it see through those trees and then showing like how, how can you generate those contours like I'm showing you in this ground control report. So this is honestly the easiest way that you're gonna be able to do this. I mean, there's nothing easier than just clicking a button and saying, give me, give me contours, <laughs> you know? You, you can do a lot of things, but, or you can just click a button and say, give me contours. Um, let's go ahead and look at one other thing. I'm gonna go ahead and show you here in the, uh, the view, I'm gonna change this from to the GPS time and show you how I flew. And this is pretty cool because it just shows you, you can pretty much directly see here exactly how I flew. 
So you can see the colors, and this color is just time. And that time is showing you, you know, I flew down and up and down. You can see the color changing over time like a rainbow. It's gonna be a pretty good idea about the time of how it flew. And you can also come in here and see how that data is lining up over time from one pass to the next pass coming back. And this is, this is how I always look at that. And then once you generate those contours and that's, that's really the end deliverable. But you guys can go ahead and look at this data set as well. I, it's all shared down in the description below and check it out. And uh, let me know if there's anything else like you wanna see in this data set or anything else you wanna see. I have some other cool data sets and we flew this awesome bridge. We took the LiDAR and we mounted it forward. And so now you're able to fly and mount the, map these facades, which is just super, super duper cool. So I think I'm gonna do a video on that one next, but if you guys have any ideas of what you would wanna see or what's cool, let me know in the comments below and uh, hope you enjoyed the video and picked up a few uh, tidbits about LiDAR. I'll see you on the next one here in the Drones. All right, see you later.